Welcome. Welcome to our Good Friday reflection. Good Friday, when our attention centres on the suffering and the death of Jesus, of his life freely given, out of love for the world and for all of creation. And this year, perhaps more than most, with minds focused on the war in Ukraine, the rising cost of living, the climate emergency, it may be helpful to remind ourselves that in Christ, God enters right into the heart of suffering, the hurt, the pain, the struggles of our world, that we might find hope and find life. Let's pray. God of the daytime and the nighttime, God of light and darkness, God of joy and sorrow, we worship you. Through you alone are we able to know that even in the darkest hours, hope is present through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. They went out and followed him, those who had sat with him at the table. He led them to a garden where he prayed while they slept where he prayed while they slept, prayed while they slept. He was kissed and because he was kissed, he was arrested. And when he was arrest arrested, his friends fled. Some to go into hiding, one to stand by a bonfire, one to say, I never knew him. I never knew him. I never knew him until a cock crowed. He was brought before the religious authorities and accused of the sin of blasphemy and of threatening insurrection. Having no power to deal with him, they handed him over to the state governor, who listened to the accusations, and then asked the accused, What have you to say? What have you to say? What have you to say? To which the response was silence. He had said it all. He was not found to be guilty of any criminal charges, but because he was an embarrassment, it was decided that his own people should determine his fate. This they did by shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! He was cursed and spat on, whipped and humiliated, and on his shoulders a gift was placed, which he accepted with grace. Under the weight of this gift, he stumbled and fell, stumbled and fell, stumbled and fell all the road to Calvary.
servant king Come see his hands and his feet The scars that speak of sacrifice Hands that flung stars into space To cruel nails surround So by named Simon, who was from Cyrene, was coming in from the countryside just then, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. A sign announced the charge against him. It read, The King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one to his right and one to his left. The people by, passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ah, look at you now, they yelled to him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, Save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross so that we can see it and believe him. Even the men who were crucified with Jesus ridiculed him. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, This man truly was the Son of God.
At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding up to him on a reed stick so that he could drink. Wait, he said, let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid.
And so we pray the prayer for Good Friday. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And if you'd like to, let's join. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. On top of a rubbish dump, he was nailed to a cross of wood and left to die, while soldiers gambled, critics joked, religious leaders smiled with satisfaction, and his mother watched and waited, watched and waited, watched and waited, until in the end she saw a sign of the new beginning. So may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into your doors. <laughs>